Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I review dozens of different websites where you can make money online. In this tutorial, I'm going to review Scribby.com and here you get paid to transcribe audio. I've been asked to do this tutorial a lot, so I'm going to review it right now for you and let's try to get an account. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is go to Scribby.com slash jobs. And here you can see that the skills you need are good communication skills, you have to be proficient in spoken and written English, and your job is to transcribe audio files into text and review audio transcripts for accuracy. You have to correct spelling, punctuation, grammatical mistakes in the transcript. So we're going to go ahead and click Apply Now. And here you get a little bit of an overview of your responsibilities. So this is a home-based job, you work at your convenience, the pay rate is $5 to $25 per audio hour uh, USD. Now, this is very low. I need to stress that. Um, I'm hoping that $5 per audio hour isn't the standard because this doesn't mean you're going to make $5 in one hour. This means between $5 to $25 US dollars of audio hour and to transcribe one hour of audio could take you three to four hours. So if you're making $5 per audio hour, that might be $1 to $2 an hour. So let's hope that it's closer to $25 because that still works out to maybe $5 or to $7 an hour. All right, so there's short files, 10 minutes or less. It's a, there's a free automated transcript to save around 60% of typing effort. I really like that because most of the other platforms, you have to type it out yourself. So this it saves you some time. If you scroll down, you'll see a bit about the transcription process. Again, they talk about payment and they say here again, we pay by audio hour and not the actual time spent working on it. So the pay for six minutes could be from 50 cents to $2. There is a monthly bonus of $5 for every three hours completed each month. There's also no restriction on the number of files you complete or submit each day, so that number could increase depending on how much you transcribe per month. Okay, so we're going to scroll back up and click on Apply Now for the transcription test. Then it says, please click the button below and log in to your PayPal account so that we can check the verified status. A verified PayPal account uh, is a necessary requirement. So you're going to have to log in with your PayPal and then agree. And then when I logged into my PayPal, I was a little nervous about doing that, but it just is saying that Scribby is going to be able to access my information, like my name, et cetera, and my account creation date, not actually, you know, have access to my account information, like my password or login details. Okay, so once you've done that, you can enter your first name, your last name, your email. So also put in your transcription experience. Uh, you can put in other relevant information about yourself. So I'm just going to put a little bit about myself. I would recommend that you do that just because I think this is kind of a chance for you to show off your English skills too. So maybe just say, I'm, my name is George and I'm from Thailand and I love English and have been speaking English for my whole life or something like that. It's not necessary, but I think it's smart. Then let's say you want to know your typing speed because you don't know. You can go to any random website. This one is speedtypingonline.com slash typing test. I just found this when I Googled it. So I'm, I just went ahead and quickly did this just for fun to see what my speed test was. And then I, I got 101 words per minute. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there as your typing speed. And then you're going to click that you have read the terms and conditions and then click submit. Okay, so after this, it says we have sent the confirmation instructions to your email address. Please check your email and visit the link provided to complete the submission. Now, so when you confirm your email, they're going to put you on a waiting list and basically say that they'll let you know when you can apply for the test. So you might have to wait a couple days before they send you the actual test um, so you can complete it. But I'd like to bring your attention to the top here. You can go to Introduction, Guidelines, Sample, Terms, FAQ, and Practice. So you can kind of have an idea of what the test is like before you actually get the application and approval to take the test. So again, here, after I confirm my email, it says, Your application has been successfully confirmed. You will receive an email from us within one business day. So basically after this, I just have to wait until they let me take the test. 
Okay, so on January 21st, I had um, an email that said confirm application submission. So they said, thank you for applying to the freelance transcription program at Scribby. Please visit the following link to complete the submission. And then on January 22nd, a day later, they said application was accepted. So we're pleased to inform you that your application for the freelance transcription program at Scribby has been accepted and you have been added to the waiting list for the transcription test. Please visit the following link to check your waiting list number. Now, about two hours after this, I received another email, transcription test invite. So it says, we are pleased to invite you for the transcription test on Scribby.com. Please visit the following link and create your account to start. You can select the test file and submit the transcription once your account has been created. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link. And now it's going to ask me to put in my name, my first and last name, and then my password to create my account. Then click create account. It says your account has been successfully created, redirecting. Okay, so we have the Scribby audio video transcription service. Here's the test. Click on the blue play button to preview the audio quality, accents, etc., etc., and select the easiest one. Once selected, the raw transcript has to be submitted within two hours. Spell check will be started automatically on submit and has to be completed in order to finish. The maximum number of attempts is 10 and cannot be increased. Selecting a file is considered an attempt. Therefore, please select carefully. You can also wait for new files to be added for more choices of test files. Then it says here, do not violate the transcription guideline rules. So I'm gonna right click here and click open in new tab. Okay, so here we've got a bunch of different transcription guidelines that I need to follow. Okay, so I've been reading through these and I think they're important to kind of read through with you as well, just the first few. So one, the raw transcript should not contain text other than the spoken audio, no headers, footers, speaker tracking, time codes, comments, etc. No part of the audio should be omitted unless specified otherwise by an instruction or another guideline. Inaudible parts should be omitted and marked with a blank. And then we have these underscore here. So that's if you can't understand it or hear it. Laughter should be omitted and marked with laughter or chuckle in brackets. Ellipses should be used to indicate unfinished sentences or mid-sentence pauses. Contractions, wanna, gonna, kinda, gotta, should not be expanded. So you'll note that with transcribe me, you have to, but with um, scribby or scribey, you don't. The number of mistakes should not be greater than two for every 10 comprehensible words spoken in the audio. So this makes me think that they're giving you some leeway to make mistakes if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one's important. A new paragraph should be started at each change of speaker and paragraphs should be separated by an empty line. So where, as with transcribe me, you would just do click enter and then you do it on the next line. Here, it looks like they want a complete empty line in between it. Fillers, right, you know, I think, like, I mean, etc. False starts and stutters should be omitted unless necessary and should be included for strict verbatim files. And utterances should be omitted for non-strict verbatim files unless necessary. Okay, they give you some more style suggestions down here. So using etc. like this instead of like this, IE instead of IE, all right and right are both acceptable. A statement can begin with and. Um, and then they have different examples for the transcription guidelines of how to write money or the percentage speed and so forth. Okay, so now if we go back here, what we can do is we can click play. We can hear the audio. So here you've got the difficulty level. So high, 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 medium. I'm not seeing anything less than medium. So I don't know if there's any sort of benefit to taking one that says high, but obviously for me, if I want to pass the test, I'd rather do one that's easier. So I would probably want to do one that says medium. There's a lot of different test files, as you can see. I think they do that to avoid people you know, copying and pasting and cheating to get accepted. So I'm going to listen to a few of these and see uh, what I like here, which is interesting is it says reported accents. So you can see GB is Great Britain. So that could be from any country within Great Britain. Uh, here we've got, uh, I believe, North American accents. 
French, I think. So yeah, uh, and then N-A. Okay, so I have just clicked select on one that sounded kind of like a sermon or something. And I chose that because a lot of them were just people sort of talking randomly. But this one sounded like someone was reading a script. And when someone reads a script, they're less likely to have a whole bunch of random words like, um, uh, like it's maybe easier to transcribe. So I've decided to do this one. Now here it says we've got the test file. It's six minutes and two seconds long. I have two hours to do it. So you can see there's a little time right here. And it says the automated transcript has been automatically added to the editor. The accuracy is estimated to be 89% plus or minus 5% and around 106 mistakes have to be corrected. The following has to be checked. Paragraph breaks required only at speaker turns as illustrated in the sample transcript. So we can open up in a new tab, the sample transcript. Utterances for strict verbatim files. Incorrect capitalization, missing punctuations, especially quotation marks. So here uh, we've got frequent terms because this was like a sermon. We've got a lot of religious terms here that they have to help you. And what I like about this is I didn't realize that it's automatically added to the editor. Okay, I've just opened up the sample transcript, which you can actually also access at the top here. And you can see there's a space left between it, hello, and then there's a space here uh, for a change of speaker. So you can kind of see there's a few places where the person didn't know what they said, so they just put these underscores here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click Open Editor. Now there's this illustrated guide. This window contains an audio player and a fully featured text editor. The editor is a standard text editor similar to Notepad or TextEdit. So we've got, it's a click this button and that's if you want to report bad audio, configure shortcuts, configure foot pedal, shortcuts reference. So here's some F7 is to skip the audio backwards by five seconds. Um, five eight backwards by three seconds audio forward uh, okay so i'm probably going to be using f7 and f8 a lot play the audio for five seconds pause and type it in the editor skip backwards and listen again if required so here uh, is from their sample text they've got their first speaker okay and then their second speaker like this so place each speaker's diction on a new paragraph. Do not include any speaker tracking. Uh, so don't put any labels. The transcript should only contain uh, the spoken audio. So there's no timestamps. We can put insert blank and that is if you don't understand something. So insert blanks are for parts which are inaudible or cannot be understood. Do not use any other indicator in space of in place of blanks. It will be replaced with a blank and count it as a mistake. So time out, keep an eye on the assignment timer. You can request an extension after the initial two hours has elapsed. The assignment can time out anytime once it starts blinking. So that's good to know if you don't have enough time to do it and I would hope that you could finish within two hours but say you were distracted, you can click on this button here and go request extension. Submit, submit when the transcript is complete. A spell check is mandatory. Before submission, the assignment will be automatically submitted once the spell check is complete. Uh, okay, so you're going to use either Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. And then it says in Chrome, you can also speed up or slow down the audio. So this is just the guide repeating itself. So now I'm going to click close. Okay, and I have this all sort of ready for me to edit and to listen to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, and I'll be back later. Okay, so I've just finished transcribing. Now I had to do all of this without breaking because it was just one speaker the whole, whole time. So I'm hoping that's okay. I'm going to click on spell check, American English. Uh, spell check completed successfully. Please click restart button to start from the beginning of the transcript or close. I'm going to click close. So that looks like, it looks good. I mean, it was more difficult than I thought. Look, I have 51 minutes. I took a small break, but it basically took me an hour long to do this six minutes of, so I thought it was going to be easier because they had it all ready for me, but I picked one that had a lot of biblical terminology. So I had to look up a bunch of words I didn't know how to spell. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead, scroll down, and I'm now I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. Okay, so after I clicked Submit, something popped up that said Review Changes, and it says, please check the file once again as the accuracy is too low. Please review before submitting. So I, when I submitted this before, I was well, about to submit it. I thought, well, what's the deal? I'm pretty sure I did an excellent job, and I don't know how the accuracy could be too low. So then I went ahead and I clicked on Diff Summary, and then it shows you what the automated computer generated and then what I corrected from that. And then it goes down and tells you like how many errors. So if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, it said the expected changes that I should have made in the script was 106, and the total changes that I made was 61. Now, for whatever reason, I don't feel like that's accurate. I feel like I made more changes than that. I'm not sure. But there's nothing else I could think that I would want to change. So I decided, whatever, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and click continue and hope that someone else reviews my file and sees that I actually know what I'm doing. My English is perfect. You know, maybe there's a couple things I could do differently, but I think I did a pretty good job, a good enough job to pass. So I went ahead and clicked continue, even though they told me not to. Okay, and then after that, it says spell check complete successfully. So then just make sure to click submit because I want to submit this for the exam. So then after that, just click submit once again. And then they ask you a little bit of information, uh, like what's the accent of the speakers in this file? Are there any issues in the audio file? So if you had an issue with it, you could have included that. So then I just went ahead and clicked submit again. Then it says processing. So then if you log in again to Scribby, and then if you click on test, you'll see it says your submission is pending review. Please reload the page to update the status. So you can click refresh. And then if you look down here, it says when I submitted it. So it was on February 15th. And then it says pending review. And then it shows you the file that I transcribed in the length of the file. And then if I click on date, it says pending review by February 18th basically telling me I'm going to know the status of my exam by February 18th. So I didn't want to publish any more information or post this tutorial until I knew if I got accepted or not. And I did get accepted into the program, which was awesome. And that's good to know because that means even though they might say it's not accurate enough, you're not going to pass, you might still pass. Basically, someone will go over your file and see, you know, if you do make some errors, that's okay. But they will see whether or not, you know, in a nutshell, you're good enough to be a transcriber for them. Uh, so I will be posting a second video because this video is getting quite long uh, and it will take me a bit of time to uh, figure out Scribby how it works and then post an example of what to expect once you do get a job. Uh, and now I think based on what I've seen in my account, I was paid 50 cents for the job I did. Granted, it took me almost an hour to do. So 50 cents in an hour is not good money. But uh, anyway, I'm like I said, I've been upfront with you from the start. I don't think this is great money, but it, it, it was easier to get accepted into than other programs, I think. And I like the fact that it was automated. So I will be posting another tutorial on Scribby. So please make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, so you can see the next tutorial when I release it. Once again, thank you very much for watching.